Hey, everybody. This is Vince Gilligan, executive producer. Brian Cranston, Walter White. Giancarlo Esposito, Gustavo Fring. Hey, it's Kelly Dixon. I'm the editor. Tom Schnauz, one of the writers of this episode. Moira Wally Beckett, one of the writers of this episode. And uh, I directed this episode and uh, had my ass handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you directed two at once. Yeah. Which was... That's just insanity. It was... Uh, you, you should have been medicated or hospitalized. I, I he, much was, yeah. he was. He was. It made, it made sense uh, to do what they call cross-boarding. So they would take two episodes and put them together in a schedule so that any time we're at a location for either episode 12 or episode 13, we would shoot out one location. It saves us time and energy and, and money. Exactly. And, and speaking of which, this was the very... This scene right here you're watching was the very first day. It was uh, the first scene we shot uh, in this cross-boarded schedule from this particular episode, episode 12. I think we started with a shot that was from episode 13, but this was uh, the first major scene we did on the first day, and you guys crushed it, as usual. You and, uh, and uh, Brian, you and Anna here did a wonderful job. Thanks. Hey, Brian, how long, how many times did that change that makeup for you? <laughs> well, Vince told me pretty uh, about halfway through the season that I'm going to be fairly messed up throughout the rest of the season. So I had to wear a little prosthetic on my nose and a, a little insert in one of my nostrils to make it look like my... Uh, oh, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Me neither. I had to put a little insert in my nostril so it looks like it's broken. Hmm. I see it's kind of flared out a little bit. But the trick is you'd forget to put it in sometimes. And we'd do a take, and he'd say, oh, shit, oh, I forgot yeah. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my nostril insert. <laughs> <laughs> and then every, burning film. We had to get a nostril insert wrangler. Yes. <laughs> remember, <laughs> that was a pretty penny. Yes. Mm. I remember cutting the scene, though, like, Anna was, like, amazing. Both of you guys were amazing. In oh, this. Don't, was like, don't do it that way. <laughs> 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 Everyone, Why not? That was so transparent of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were good too, Brian. I thought it was good. See the bump on my nose? That's yeah. Now I see it. Yeah. Yeah, Anna doesn't have any kind of insert in her nose. No. <laughs> yeah. Try to she, act with an insert. Just, she just does acting. She doesn't yeah. need all these props. <laughs> <laughs> these things up her no, nose. we're lying on <laughs> cosmetics. <laughs> I alone. You do look pretty, you look good beat up. Yeah. Well, a lot of that is my own <laughs> real face. <Yeah. laughs> uh, I have a beat up looking face. It looks like I've been through a war. It does. Yeah. Well, you have it by the, this point in the yeah. season, yeah. story-wise. Yeah. Like, uh, I'd like to say season three was Walt's windshield getting the damage, and this we went right to his face. This <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cut out the middle. Yeah. Man. Season five, it's going to be his ass. Mm. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Can I ask how... Uh, you guys work individually. You don't write as a team. Uh, you weren't hired as a team. Right. So now when, when it gets to a certain point where, where Vince decides he wants to put a couple writers together, how do you manage to work that out? It's a cage fight. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You have long nails. Yeah, you scratch Tom. Sets up and, this, uh, it's really obscene. Well, how did and you set it up, We have to, we have really? to fight it out. Um, no, he assigns us. We're in rotation, so it's part of it's just who's available, you know. Mm -hmm. And and in, in the interest of time, he pairs us up, and and then uh, we when we all, break up the acts, it's sometimes it's we write who's generally interested in the scene, um, uh, or like act. for four oh nine. Moira, I remember she was really I, like, I want to do the fight scene. I really wanted to write so I, the fight scene. <laughs> and Just I got the that. sniper scene in 409. So this this one, uh, I can't remember how exactly we broke it up, but we just kind of... you really wanted the, um, the, the do it. You know, the, the, big gun, the big confrontation scene was eventually... Uh, Vince was originally going to write that, and he was so busy that... Yeah. He, I think I had written it in the outline. Before we right. go to script, we write an outline for the studios and the networks, and it also helps the crew a little bit get in a sense of what's going to be coming up. Uh, for an episode, um, but I wrote that act in uh, in outline form, and I just thought I, I had sort of figured it out on paper. I thought I had I had a really good feel for it, so I, I, I totally won. had scene envy, though. I mean, we, <laughs> I, it was I was ready to duke it out, but but I, I had to I had to give it to Tommy. He, so he you each uh, take turns as someone to uh, write the teaser, someone to write Act One, yeah. Act yeah. Two, Act Three, yeah. and then when you get it together, do you? You get together first before you turn it into Vince? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And, and do you have we, arguments and uh, you know, do you go, I hate this, I love this? I, you know. No. We're How do you come to an agreement? 
We're civilized well, people, Brian. Right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to get some dirt. Yes. <laughs> Behind her back, I totally like, oh, she fucked this up. Yeah, this you know, and, and everybody knows that I carried Tom yes. uh, all season. But, um, uh, no, it's pretty, you know. We've got to talk about a special effect here, though. Oh, What's, okay. What special effect? This this is not normal. This just happened like this. <laughs> yes. How special on earth effect. are you talking about? I love how you didn't. There was a, there was, I'll say it real quick. There was our wonderful uh, on-set uh, special effects guys uh, uh, put a, a clear plastic dowel straight down uh, from the gun from the gun to the ground and then had a pulley with a bit of fish line and they could control Brian would spin the thing but they could control exactly when it would stop and didn't it look perfect wow. it did a great yeah. job and uh, the only trouble is everybody would keep tripping over the thing on the, on right. the set there because it was a bit of fish <laughs> line true. you could barely see it. And then you would just paint it out when you're done, right? You it, what, yes. Did you see the, the monofilament and the dowel? You and, know what? The dowel mainly. The yeah. monofilament was never really in the shot, but the, the dowel, uh, the the paint job. That, Here's a little forecasting coming out. Our first clue, go. everyone. Yeah. Uh, first clue. There we go. And it was really fun choosing the music cue for this. We had so many incredible yeah. options, both from Thomas and from Dave. I think they were sort of duking it yeah, they out. They duked they it really out. Really wanted each of them. Dave, our composer, and Thomas, our music supervisor, both had some great stuff for great us. Great choices. Yeah, Thomas G found this great song. It's uh, Apollo. What's the name of the? Uh, 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 oh shoot! I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank. Well, I'll think of it. But uh, but that paint job, painting out that dial, turned out to be the biggest hassle. Bill no Pol kidding. Bill Pulowski, uh, uh, our visual effects uh, supervisor, and uh, Diane Mercer just had a hell of a time doing it, but did a great job. You know what? Um, even before it was painted out, we fooled a lot of people. I mean, we, yeah. you know, a lot of people didn't even know. You couldn't, it was really hard to see. That's true. How hard did you even try? Or did you? This day shooting... We had uh, uh, a guest DP. We had uh, a Nelson Craig come in just on this one day. Or was it just this one day? Yeah, it was the first day because uh, our wonderful director of photography, Mr. Michael Slovis, was watching his son graduate from medical school. You see, that's the problem with this business. He chose that over working. <laughs> uh, his priorities are askew. Yeah, he's, he's not being asked back for no. season five. <laughs> <laughs> when someone makes that kind of life decisions... <laughs> uh, I've got a question about this carpet. Is this carpet really that purple? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, is. It, it, it really yeah. is. It's a Look at the drapes. Effect. Everything drapes. So, carpet uh, matches and the drapes. This is <laughs> it's the Marie way. It's surreal. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's part of it. So, early on, you talk about color schemes, Vince. Do you think you her want. pubic hair is purple? Hey, now. Oh, oh, hey, now. Why, why go Only there? Only for special why occasions. Go? So, carpet matching the drapes the wasn't enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was no, but here, he, he thinks he's in the writer's room. I know. I forgot, I forgot where I was. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Talk sorry. about the color. Well, hey, look, that's purple. But um, yeah. Each so character that's, that's has Marie's, a color scheme. Yeah, a color yeah. scheme. She doesn't change. She's been purple from episode one. Yes. Yes. Her character's color has not evolved as some of the other characters have. What are you talking about? Yeah, she's constant. Every All the other characters, like Bri uh, Bri Walt's character has evolved from sort of beige to green, from green to red black, and, black and then red. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, Marie is a constant, and if Betsy Brandt were here, uh, she would probably say that's as it should be. She's uh, like the Rock of Gibraltar, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. character-wise. Yeah, and Hank's color hasn't really changed. She's always been sort of orange, shades of orange. Um, Stephen Michael Quezada. Well, no, actually, and uh, Hank has changed. I mean, it's shades of orange, but we've darkened him. Yeah, he's gotten, gotten yeah. gone yeah. to black and actually darkened him up. And uh, Jesse's colors have transitioned, as have Skylar's. Yeah. Skylar did a swap from blues into Walt's colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. greens, as she, as she as started she... to break bad. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and Stephen Quezada here plays uh, Gomez, who does a great job. Uh, we always sort of key... We used to key Gomez's uh, wardrobe choices off of Hank's, as if he was sort of uh, Hank Jr. Yeah. But then uh, <laughs> after Hank stopped being a DEA Hank agent, Light. Hank Light. But after he, uh, after Hank got wounded, uh, he sort of became his own man, as it were, and started dressing a little differently. And actually, speaking of Stephen, he does a great job in this scene. He mm -hmm. does. He really does. I was watching this recently. Yep. And he, he really nails this. Yeah. 
This is a real industrial laundry that we shoot as an industrial laundry. Yes. In yes. Albuquerque. And we use the employees. Yeah, employees of the, of the place. Yeah. Except this guy, he's an actor. This guy's an actor. His yeah. name is Mike Bataya. Bataya, if I'm pronouncing it right. Good did, job. Did a good job. Yeah, he's out of LA. Yeah, I like him a lot. What's your name? Dennis. Dennis, hey, I'm sorry. We might, little, little spoiler <laughs> te teaser, we might see him in season five. We just might. We just might. And the gentleman in the background, his name is also Mike, uh, the guy standing against the car. He is a real uh, New Mexico State trooper. Uh, and uh, he uh, is also a dog handler in real life. And that is the dog, Sasha, that you're going to see revealed here in a minute or two, is not actually his dog. That was another uh, officer's dog who was also there on the day. But we had, we had Mike handle the dog on camera because being a real dog handler, he knew what to do. We always like to go for realism whenever we can. I love this part, which was not in the script, where he turns around and he says, tell my partner it's okay to come in. I guess officially... I got grief on this. I was yeah. I was directing here, and uh, uh, there were some uh, folks visiting us from the actual DEA. Mm -hmm. I didn't get grief, grief, but they no. were good naturedly. Uh, some of the DEA agents were saying, "There's no way that the partner, the guy in the background, would be that far away because he has to be able to witness. He has to witness, mm -hmm. as so that so that in a court of law later he can say, well, you know, uh, this guy he did not get." Uh, Permission you know, to go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So, uh, so we, we, I, but I, I like the, uh, you know, I let art trump reality here, and I, because I like the guy in the deep background. Mm -hmm. But we added this little line here. Could you tell my partner it's okay? So we kind of we fudged it a little bit, but figured it was okay. No, you covered it legally. That's which is important. Mm. Yeah, they were still not. Mm. They still thought it was a, a little bit of horse, <laughs> horse, horse pucky there, but, but you know. You make it quick, right? I love, I love how he got pulling on his ear there. Yeah. That was a good touch. He's good. Yeah, he was good. Mike was good. There were a lot of mics this day. Okay. Okay. Is the dog a real drug dog? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, real. And, you know, a funny story with this. <laughs> I might have told this on the podcast, but uh, <laughs> Sasha here was a very sweet dog, female. Uh, she and all the dogs, in fact, they get disappointed. They get discouraged uh, if they work too long without finding any dope. And uh, so these guys, uh, Mike, the dog handler, and, his, and the other fellow who actually owns Sasha, uh, trained Sasha, th these guys are legally um, allowed to carry a small amount of dope on them. And uh, they went later on in the day, because we are here for a long day of shooting, later on in the day, a couple times, they went to the car mm -hmm. and got the dope out and hid it and let the dog find it, because <laughs> the dog otherwise, would, her feelings would be hurt. She'd be discouraged. Unless she didn't wow. accomplish it. Yeah. So, but we had, we told the, our crew to be careful not to, uh, you know. <laughs> it doesn't have anything on you. <laughs> <laughs> you better be clean when you come to work. It's, exactly. it's irony because <laughs> you. Vince is the same way. He feels discouraged <laughs> unless he finds a little little sample of dope well, at the end of the day. Actually, for me, it's Cheetos. Che I, need, yeah. I need to find Cheetos. It's true. Or yeah. blow pops. Yeah, blow whatever, pops. Your drug of choice. Whatever. <laughs> That's a nice transition. Smooth right transition there. from the... Yeah. Real location to a set. Way to go, Kelly yeah. Dixon. Yes, Kelly. Yeah. Oh, nice. Thank you. It. That's very nice of you, but I really have to thank Vince Gilligan for that one because those things have to be well thought out, and, you know, they're really two different... They, they're two different locations. Well, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So, uh, thank you. So I appreciate it. <laughs> trying to send all that positive energy that way for you, no, Vince. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're very sweet. You're very sweet. <laughs> That was done with a, a thing, I don't know the exact model, but some called a hothead, which is a, it's a crane with a with a remote operated. Used to be in the old days, you'd put a, a cameraman up on a seat on a chair, operating the camera way up on the end of the crane. But now they have this remote controlled uh, head, mm -hmm. so nobody's up there on the end of the crane. It's all done remotely. You know, the camera pans and tilts uh, yeah. from a distance. But you have to really think about that. I mean, and I've learned on this show that you have to really think about. How you're going to stage those kinds of things because um, you have to like you kind of have to shoot going down, but you have to go behind something, and then for the floor you have to come out from something. You can't just shoot towards the floor and yeah. just have it work. It doesn't just work like that. And that's a tricky kind of shot to get for the crew because they had to pull half the set apart to get this crane, the big the chassis for the crane. The thing is like you know 20 feet long and it's on big. Uh, truck tires or car tires, and it you know you got to have room for it to back out of there and move around, and so you got to take 
half that set of parts. It or is. It's cumbersome. It's cumbersome. Our guys are always working their butts off, uh, putting stuff up, taking it down, moving it around. And I mean, it doesn't sound like a big so deal, but deal. the timing of those things also is really important. If both sides have to go at the same speed there or it's not going to look great. Right. Exactly. Good point. And there is Mr. Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. Man with the best posture on television. I know, mean, you have such yeah. good posture. Uh, it's like good yoga. <laughs> is, that, is it yoga? Do you credit yoga for that? Oh, I think so, yes. Just Look sit at on him my right now. He's so fit. <laughs> nice. He's got this, like, rocking, tight black T-shirt on. <laughs> fit as a fiddle. Do you do that Getting hot yoga? Flustered. No, I don't. What's I, I don't. That's Bikram yoga. Bikram, okay. <laughs> I've, I've done that. I've done You're that. Like that. Yoga. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's that like... hot yoga. <laughs> seems to fascinate Vince. We can't figure out why. It just seems very sweaty. It tell tell me more about dangerous. what positions you get into. <laughs> <laughs> when is it safe to bend over? <laughs> and Ray Campbell. Ray Campbell. Ray Campbell is Tyrus. Ray's great. From Guyana. I'd never met anyone from Guyana before that I know of. Right. Okay, I was like, you know, I said, is that Guyana like easy? Yes, yeah, yeah, John, yeah, Jonestown. Yeah, Jonestown. Patented timeless yeah. sequences. Yes. This was this was the very last day of shooting, actually. Uh, it's funny how it's all, you know, I mentioned a few minutes ago the very first day of shooting. This, this was composition events just to interrupt you. That was so beautiful. Yeah, it was. Thank you. And thanks to Mike Slovis and to our camera operators. Uh, Andy Vogley and uh, Lynn. Uh, what's Lynn's? I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, Lynn and Andy are two operators, do a wonderful job. That's classic Breaking Bad right there. And this is within, you could walk, I mean, it'd be a eh, 15, 20 minute walk, but you could walk to the studio from here. It's not going to look like that in 10 years. It's going to look like the way Valencia looks now, probably. It's all going to be tracked homes everywhere. But right now, it's just a great place, a great back lot, as it were, to shoot out on. And it's right next to, this place is right next to a rifle range where W. Gilpin, uh, among other people, our construction coordinator, goes out and shoots his uh, various uh, rifles and whatnot. And it's, some guy was out there with, I think, with a 50 caliber sniper rifle, and you could hear <laughs> you know, this sounded like a cannon going off. You had to duck in between shots. <laughs> well, you're kind of worried because you're like, you know, it would have straight around. I mean, they were sort of shooting um, uh, perpendicular to us, but, you know, somebody just had a misfire off in the wrong direction or something. Who knows? This well, is also pretty close to the airport. Coming up is our next clue into Thank Walt's you. plan. If you look very close, I was a little worried about are we giving too much away? Mm. Are they going to figure it out with the flower and uh, the pat down coming up? Yeah. But uh, this is a, just a different kind of episode because we don't really we don't really trick the audience. We're usually in Walt's head or somebody, you know, when he's, you know, early in the season, Moira's episode, when they're preparing the lie. They're doing, we see them preparing when they're going to trick people. But Walt disappears for such a large portion of this episode. He's out there up to something. <laughs> and... There's this is the the rice and cigarette. Mm -hmm. Ah, disappears there. Wow, I didn't I see it. That. The hand Wait, in the pocket. Wait, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it. it. The first time I didn't see it before. Here's, Wait, run it back. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. People will be running it back. They'll go. Wait a minute. Oh, he did put his hand in his pocket. Well, it's funny because um, don't you love when that pillar just <laughs> 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 just so when this episode aired between this Sugar episode tits. and the last mm -hmm. episode. Honey tits. Honey tits. <laughs> HT, for sure. Between this one and the last it's episode, endearing. it was like the boards, the, the forum sites online went crazy, just debating, debating, debating like crazy. Yeah. You know, what was going on? Who was doing what? Did, you know, where was the cigarette? Who knew about all that stuff? It was, That's I mean, great. so much talk. I know I was like working on another show and wasn't getting much work done the, during those two weeks. I was just so busy reading. Uh, since last night. Today, he didn't show up to work, and the DEA just happened to, like, raid I us. I love Bob Odenkirk here. Yeah, some coincidence. Saul Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I, all I know is... Yeah, I don't really ever like to look online, but I was so proud of this episode. I was like, oh, let me go check it out. And, of course, the first... Always I, a mistake. Oh, my God. Don't do it. <laughs> Always a mistake. I don't, I don't do it. It was people like, Gus, Gus's plan makes no sense, but, of course, it's not... Yeah. You don't know everything. Gus didn't... 
organized this. <laughs> he poisoned the kid for what? It, it really, yeah, if you think about it, it, if it was Gus doing this, it makes no sense at all. All it makes, all that matters is in the moment, yeah. Jesse Jesse returns to Walt. Walt yeah. I mean, in Gus has terms. been pulling so many strings that when Walt makes this pitch, yeah. Jesse, in that moment, yes, I believe that. I think the pitch works, though. Yes. Yeah, but. Well, pitch works well. Not, not according well. to one asshole on the internet. <laughs> 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 you never forget it. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> Why did I turn my computer on? Yeah. Asshole, please forget it. <laughs> now, you know, I should say, I should say, uh, God bless the fans and the internet and the way it brings fans together. And it's a, but, you know, for, for folks who, who do this, who, you know, on, on this end of things, I, I never think it's that helpful because human nature being what it is, you know the good the good reaction you want more and more and more like like a heroin addict would and and all it would take for the bad reaction all it takes is one out of out of many and that's the only one you seem, tend to remember it's it's mm. the human human nature i guess i don't know but i i steer clear not cuz i don't love the fans or, or love the fact that they love us but just because it's it's too much like heroin i guess <laughs> mm-hmm. you can just barely see that guy at the window that guy mm-hmm. still posted there with a shotgun rifle. yeah Exactly, and all the purple. I really wish There's a lot of purple. Even She's, even the coffee, like packaging, the strainers. is purple. <laughs> the strainers. The, yeah. she buys the, the colanders. The, the, mm-hmm. co- the brand of coffee has to be purple too. Our set dresser does a wonderful job of that. <laughs> it's set dressing when it's in the background, untouched. It's a prop when the actor interacts with it. So yeah. there's some bleed over there between what the set dressers buy and what the prop department mm-hmm. buys. But yeah, a lot of purple. Speaking of props, coming up here. That is W. Gilpin's <laughs> actual <laughs> rifle. Oh, yeah, sorry. that yeah. is a wow. It's got some, the thing on the end is something called a hog. That's something hog. The the the, the muzzle break on the end. It, that is that is a that is a you would not That's want badass. you would not want W. mad at you. Yeah, we also he he had the sniper right. His his gun was the sniper rifle in four oh nine. I would. Any yeah. government officials out there who are listening to this <laughs> might want to go check him out. <laughs> Not in New Mexico, man. Anything flies in New Mexico. It's like Virginia, my home state. Wild West. It's like you, you got an open container and a machine gun next to you right on. Yeah. <laughs> Just give a turn signal. In the car. That's all I ask. Yeah. <laughs> so, Moira and Tom, who, who wrote this part? Uh, I did. Were, I mean... There were a lot of people that kind of thought that she was going to get taken out. Yeah, <laughs> in, in what, I didn't think about that when I when I but in seeing oh my god the way that Vince shot was like, it, people it was just like people were just sort yeah. of expected a sniper. To we're just, just gonna like, bang, take her out. Yeah, yeah actually, which I love actually. Nice I realized timing. could have put a sniper up they on that hilltop there. Yeah, got the sunset there though. That's great. Oh, I was uh, real yeah. sunset yeah. down in Albuquerque. Nice. It's hard to catch those sunsets. Aaron's good at this flip thing. Yeah, he's been doing that for a long time. Yeah. Hey, what's up? This is one of those th- times where you're running hey. running out of time. We had to do this in one shot, so you're thinking, how do you keep it interesting? So. I like be your choice, sir. Oh, thank you. Cool. Yeah, I kind of like this one. This was yeah. the end of the day. We, we'd run out of time. We had to do it in one. Yeah, I love that. This, if you look real closely there, at that cut, and it's not Kelly's fault, is the way I wanted it. That's a little bit of a mismatch because we're using the very opening shot is actually an alternate take of, of Jesse running in angry, or not angry, but freaked out about the ricin. Remember that, Kelly? We yeah, used... basically, you'll see it again at the, at the top of the next. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, so the he top comes of the back next afterwards. Yeah. yeah, but I don't look at it as at my fault. I kind of no. I, well, I, I was joking. Kind of <laughs> <found> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I was. I was. Any I was chance just, to blame uh, Kelly? Yeah. yeah. Who no, should no. we put the blame I on? Kind of. Kelly. I think I, if I remember correctly, I found that shot and said, "Hey, why don't we do this?" Yeah. yeah. I love that little bit with the hair stuck in his face. Yeah. 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 Emily human. Emily Rios did a wonderful yeah, job here. She's great. Did an excellent job. Sorry, it's just we try to keep it to two visitors maximum, so, okay. Go, go, I'll be out here. You need me, go, go. T.C. Warner here is a nurse. She did a very nice job. Is this a set, Vince, or is it that closed-down part this, of the hospital? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. This is a real, honest-to-God emergency room, and this is the real exterior of it. Sometimes you see the interior and the exterior, and they're two completely different places, but this is all of a piece. This is all uh, one place, and it's a, it's a, a hospital over not too far from Kirtland Air Force Base uh, near the airport. And most of it is closed down. And it has been very good to us because most every hospital scene you've ever seen in this show, whether it's Walt getting his 
lung cancer removed or whatnot has been shot in this place. And, but this was the first time we ever used the closed down ER and it was a real blessing to have it. And wow. so talk about this shot, Vince, you had a... Piece of glass, yeah. uh, our, our uh, camera was, was underneath uh, a bunch of Apple boxes on a shot again. piece of Lexus. Yeah. And now oh, wow. <laughs> there's another taker, yeah. And I wanted this all uninterrupted, but actually Kelly came up with a real good thing there. Yeah, Talk about great. that. Yeah. Great job. Kelly. How you cut this. Uh, oh, Kelly. you just had one, you, you had what they call wonders, where you shot everything in one, and I just kind of wanted to make it a little bit more frenetic, and I just said, Vince, keep an open mind. Let's try this. And you're like, okay, can I close my mind now? <laughs> 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 and he said, no, no, it's really cool, but he wanted, you wanted at this point to be in one, so we stayed out yeah. in one shot, but we built him running in in, I think, maybe five or six different shots. Yeah. Some, you can't really tell on some of the cuts, but there's about five or six cuts in it. But I want to stress, we didn't we didn't do it because the cameraman flubbed it. The cameraman executed it and the actors executed it perfectly time yeah. and time again for probably seven takes. I yeah, probably it was did more than I needed. Yeah. yeah. His walking, is, is it sped up a little bit? Believe it or not, no. It's really? all uh, 24 frames uh, shot normally, and Andy Vogley, the camera operator, did it with this 35 pound motion picture, you know, film camera on his, on his shoulder. This was not steady cam. This was just him shuffling around handheld. We could have done steady cam, but we didn't want it that smooth. We wanted it to look a little more news newsreelish or cinema veritas. There's a right? jump cut there. Did you see it? Oh, that's <laughs> no. right. I'm sorry. No, no, tell him. <laughs> tell him. No, there's just a jump cut right there. And, you know, it was fun all the, a lot of times trying to, you know, see what we can get away with and see if anybody can tell. Explain what a jump cut is. Um, It just means that uh, at that point, Brian, you were getting up and in one shot and we actually made a cut in it because it took too long for me. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, oh, you did took I take my time? <laughs> yes, it took too long. No, it was just, it was just, uh, I wanted, I just wanted it to ha happen a little bit quicker. And so I made a jump and to see if I could do it. And I asked Vince when he got there, could he tell? And he's like, no. Yeah. So we left it in. Very nice. This scene was my uh, Waterloo. Or, yeah. <laughs> this, this, this was... Uh, <laughs> This scene, this we shot this scene, this entire sequence uh, was one day of shooting out of eight days. Uh, well, technically, we, we shot all this, two episodes all back to back, yeah. but essentially eight days per episode. This was uh, represented one eighth of the schedule of this one episode, and and you guys were such troopers, Brian, you and Aaron, because uh, I didn't, always are. I didn't know what the hell I was doing this day. No, that's not, that's not true. It was, but there's a Newsweek article, a Newsweek reporter was here this day and wrote a very interesting article about the making of this scene, essentially. A young guy from Newsweek who yeah. looked like he was about was, 16 years old who did was, an excellent job. Wasn't it way before he even knew, like, you, he didn't know what the rub was in this whole thing, right? No. No, and we didn't want to let that out, but uh, mm. it was interesting that he was here on this day. Yeah. Um, and this is this is actually very typical in in all of the best uh, conditions and circumstances. You hope that the writing, the directing, the acting comes and melds together, and everybody understands, and it it flows smoothly. And there are times when you get on the set and you think you know where it, where it's going to go, and all of a sudden you go. The actors and the director go, I don't know, something's not working for me, and you just have to settle back step back and figure out the, the right approach. And, yeah. and this is one of those days where we were going down a, a, an avenue that wasn't working. Yeah. We had to pull it back and try another one and then try another one. And yeah. And it's coming up here where it started to go wrong for me, where I felt like I was I didn't know what I was going. But God bless you guys for working your butts off because this is exhausting. I got, I can never having done it, but watching you guys, this is exhausting work, I got to think. It's, doing, it's maintaining that kind of emotion. Yeah. I mean, from here on out, the early yeah. stuff is prelude, but from here on out. But in a nutshell, my problem this day was that I wanted, it seemed me, imperative me to me that the audience think, because Aaron is a sweet guy, Jesse is a sweet character in a lot of ways, and but I wanted it, it was imperative to me that the audience think he is going to pull that trigger at any second. Yeah. you got to absolutely believe he will kill him. And yet, it's a very one-sided, dialogue-wise, it becomes a one-sided scene as written, as written very, very, very nicely. Uh, Tom actually wrote this particular scene. Uh, but at a certain point, Walt has to explain himself, and yet, and, and which necessitates Jesse to be quiet. 
But part of me was thinking, Jesus, Jesse wouldn't listen to all this bullshit coming out of this guy's mouth. He'd just shoot him in the, in the yeah. you know, just empty his gun in his face at a certain point. So how do you keep one actor's energy up, his danger up, while the other guy is just talking and talking and talking? It felt a little lopsided structurally. But having said that, it, it plays like gangbusters, and I was I was looking through the wrong end of the telescope. I was focused essentially on the wrong things, and that's what got me in trouble. But you guys pulled me out of the fire here. It's what a terrific scene by Aaron. He just pulls out so much intense emotion on this. He does. He does a great job here. And great writing. Excellent writing. Yeah. Today is uh, the my godson, Brock, <laughs> who, the character who was poisoned his name after it's his birthday today. So oh, yeah? Uh, after I leave here, I'm going to his birthday party. Happy birthday, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> and um, please apologize to him for poisoning him. Yes. <laughs> I will. Uh, especially on his birthday. That was uh, very nasty of me. But, uh, yeah, you guys, you guys are just fantastic in this. Yeah. Scene. Well, it was interesting. And the fact that Walt is lying, you know? Yeah. At the, uh, lying yeah. in this critical moment. And we also have to believe that that Walt is telling the truth here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. That's it's what very I, tricky. Yeah. I think is really so interesting. I remember asking you or talking to you about Brian before we wrapped last year, saying that it, I just think it's so amazing because here we don't know as an audience that you're lying, but you do, yes. and it's just so amazing. Just the emotion that's going on, and when you find when we finally realize all the different like subtext that's going on in the scene is just mind blowing to yeah. me. Yeah. So much of the season was, you know, Walt versus Gus, but it yeah. to me it was always the fight for Jesse's soul, who was going to win who was going to win who's Jesse the, and Gus Walt has to go to these extreme lengths cuz Gus has won the fight and yeah. he needs to win the war. Yeah. And yeah. you guys were telling me that, you know, at at this point Walt I mean, I mean Tom and Vince, you guys were telling me at this point Okay Walt is, children. you know, okay with Jesse pulling the trigger. Yeah. He basically is going to go to that kind of length to... To, to me, to me, if if the the, the best case scenario is, is his gambit succeeds, the, the second best is that Jesse just puts him out of his misery mm -hmm. here. Better Jesse kills him than, than Gus Fring cuts his throat or puts him out in the desert again like he did in the previous episode. Or um, I also want to say here before it's over... Excellent, excellent score by Mr. Dave Porter, our composer. And a lot of us thought in the editing room and whatnot, uh, thought we shouldn't have any music at all in this scene. But Dave said, let me try something. And he went back thematically to music that he introduced at the very end of the previous episode, episode 11. This really amazing sonic uh, reverberation from the end of the previous episode. It's just very dark and disturbing music. And just a little bit of just a touch of it really adds so much to the scene. You're his cook now. You're the cook, and you have proven that you can run a lab without me. And now that cook has reason to kill me. Think about it. It's. Brilliant. I remember when you came in to work on this scene, Vincey, you didn't even want to, you were like not even wanting to watch. You just were. We're flashing back to the you said the most awful day. I was scared. I was I was scared. Of, I love this. I love. By the way, I never saw on the day when the when the, the when imprint? the yeah when the muzzle comes away here in a second, oh, you I see an imprint that. left on Brian's forehead. Which, oh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Which which a shows how how into it these guys were yep. and how much physical pain and and you know falling. You must have fallen down like twenty times yeah. that day, been pushed to the floor. You must have been we sore beat as hell. We the crap out of you this season. Know, right? It was a very <laughs> physical year. Yeah. <laughs> but this imprint is such. I never Look saw it on that. the day. Oh, wow. That's my favorite moment. I only saw it uh, in the editing room. Walt's wow. third eye. <laughs> but I was so nervous to see this thing cut together because I didn't want to relive all the all the pain and fear. But uh, I barely touched this scene. Uh, Kelly, you did a, just a tremendous job editing this thing together. I barely had a note on this whole thing. Thanks, Vince. Yeah, I don't remember many. There's a few that I remember, but not many. Just maybe just a little nip and tuck here and there. But it was it was it was so well done, so well edited. Thank you. And then we're out of time here at the end of the day. We actually dropped an entire scene here mm -hmm. that we never shot. That was the aftermath. Uh, it was going to be the beginning of the next act, which was Jesse and Walt talking through their plan in advance of us seeing it. And on the day, we literally, we'd been doing this for 10 or 11 or 12 hours straight, and we ran out of time. And I took, I, I did some soul searching, took a look at the script and said, you know what? We're going we're gonna to drop that scene and never shoot it, uh, which I am lucky to have that uh, 
uh, luxury as the showrunner. My other directors. Yeah, you would have been pissed if somebody yeah. else did that. Why didn't they oh, shoot that? Yeah. I would have been absolutely livid. Oh, yeah. And you know what? God bless all my other directors who do do have to work under your tyranny. Yes, exactly. <laughs> was that the word guess, you were searching for? I guess for? that's the best yeah. way to put it. Yeah. God bless them because they. It was a scene where I always li I liked the scene because it was. Basically, Jesse coming up with ideas that Walt had already tried. Right. Yeah. Earlier, why don't we go to his house? And, you know, no, Walt did that in 402. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just rush him at the restaurant? No, Walt did that in 405. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all these right. ideas that Walt has already been through. Yeah. It's so it's so interesting to, to have a scene that's written and all the way through the process, and you think it's absolutely necessary, and then on the day through practical limitations, and yeah. you go, yeah. we can't shoot it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Maybe yeah. we shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, it as 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 uh, Tom just said, it would have been a fun scene, but it would have told us what we were about to see here, and it would have worked, but it would have taken away a little some of the suspense of what in the hell are these mm -hmm. guys up to? Mm -hmm. A minute ago, he wanted to kill Gus. Now he's just sitting in a hospital here. You mean Walt? Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, well, uh, actually, a minute ago, he wanted to kill Gus. He was about to go out the door. Oh right. I mean, yes. Before that, he wanted to kill Walt. Now he's changed his plan. But now, why is he sitting in a hospital? What's That's the a, plan? There must be a plan here. That was a great transition. I always like that. Oh, that was Kelly, fun. you want to talk about that? Uh, I think we should give credit to our time lapse guys for that one. Yeah. I mean, I just put a dissolve in there. Well, talk, <laughs> briefly talk about the about the time lapse uh, method. Yeah, you please, because that fascinates me. And an employer who Okay, um, we, we just we send we send a time lapse crew. Help me out, Vince, please. Because well, we we had there's a couple of guys, uh, Dom and um, oh shoot, I'm drawing a blank on the other gentleman's name, but two two gentlemen who who do a great job. They go out with Perignon, a Perignon, uh, I think, is it Dom, Dom and Perignon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, they go out and they they take a still camera, uh, you know, a camera you could get at Best Buy or whatnot, a digital SLR. And they go out and they and they have a real eye, these gentlemen, and they they shoot these time lapses where they take one frame every, you know, minute or two minutes or whatever. When all these frames are run together, much like the way the motion picture film is shot, they 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 seem to move, they seem to come alive. But in the case of a time lapse, taking a one shot every you know minute or two minutes or three minutes or whatever, it, it you see the clouds zoom across the sky, you see the sky go dark or go light or whatever. This was the first day again. We're back to the first day of shooting. Uh, so, well, just to finish up, those guys are out there, physically out there, yeah. literally, for hours and hours on yeah. end. Yeah. Well, not as wow. many hours as you would think, though. Yeah. That, that surprised me. I thought they'd literally be out there for 12 or 14 or 20 hours straight. But they're very good at picking the right times of day where... where you see the you greatest see a, transition. Exactly, in a short order. So they're usually doing these for three or four hours, and that way they can get three or four of them in on a given day. So it's almost like a second unit or a third unit crew yeah. that's out there for us to do exactly. these things. And all stills put together. Yes. Yeah. A bunch of stills, which, which is really, when you think of it, all we're watching it's right film. here. Stills put film, together. Film is shooting 24 individual still photographs a second. This is the guts of an actual... Uh, hmm. uh, Baby uh, monitor. Well, no, actually, th this is the guts of the actual uh, 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 time bomb. Special effects uh, yeah. uh, trigger for the bombs that they set off on the on the special effects uh, crew. Yeah, the script was Walt impro improvising yeah. with a baby monitor, but that's, I don't know when we lost that. Yeah, you know, you know why we lost it because I, as much as I love the idea of a baby monitor, sort of repurposing it a baby so monitor, it was so corrupt. I love no, that. No, well, yeah. I love that. I love that. But but I I wanted to be as real as possible. And these the little walkie talkies that Walt was just playing with, you can buy those at you know Walmart or Target or whatever, and and get them for you know forty bucks. And they have a range of seven or eight miles. And a baby monitor only has a range of two or three hundred feet. And I wanted it to be realistic. He could actually mm -hmm. trigger this thing from far from two blocks away or whatever there's there's mr fring there's looking, our guy. looking snazzy looking slick. <laughs> looking <Okay. slick. laughs> there's another one of these wanders that was pretty much born of necessity but uh came out came out nicely lynn our b camera operator mm. operated this one lynn and uh, lynn steve, lockwood lynn lockwood and mm -hmm. steve bannister his mm -hmm. uh, first ac did a very nice job nice focus pull nice Nicely done here. Very nice shot. And this is, uh, you were so good in this scene, Giancarlo. You scare me. Day. This was mm -hmm. a good day. You scare me like that. 
This, this is the real chapel in the closed down hospital. And it's about the size of a phone booth. And Michael Slovis took one look at it and said, what are, what are you trying, <laughs> are you to, killing trying me? to kill me? Here? I understand your preoccupation. Our uh, Mark, Mark Freeborn, our production designer, came up with a, a skin to put that fake uh, bit of... Uh, Sort of new agey looking uh, uh, stained glass. Stained glass. In a, oh, yeah. yeah, to get a little light and color. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because yeah. otherwise you'd be seen out to a dumpster or something. <laughs> very, very like that. realistic. Yes. And your direction on this day, not to do it uh, as, you know, we talked about this. You, you actually came to me and talked about this, that we see this type of scene so many times in the pew, sitting down next right. to each other. Mm -hmm. It really, really freed us up to be oh, in this, this position. If something happens. So in this scene, though, Sorry. you guys, because um, there's, I guess, there was a lot of controversy over, like, this scene versus, you know, in play to the next scene, where basically you're saying, you were saying, Vincent, Tom, and Moira, that um, Gus kind of gets tipped off because of what Jesse says to mm -hmm. him Yeah. in this scene. It's not like... We want to believe Gus has these superhuman. Right. It's really it is, it is the it's final. <laughs> to me, it's the final clue of oh, that's what, well, that's what Walter. How does like how does Gus know something's going on? And right. it's that it's exactly that that he didn't do any of this, and and fucking Walt is out there. He's out there being chaotic. <laughs> he he's yeah. What I love about this is that it's it's again a surprise. You expect Gus to say get back in there, yeah. you know, and he takes the left turn. Talk it's about, everything Jesse can do not to just sure. put his hands around his throat. And yeah, it doesn't dawn on him right away. Believes. Yeah, exactly. Gus hasn't figured out right away that's not what's going on. It's only as he's walking back to the car that he's. It's like, wait, Jesse said. The spidey sense yeah, goes on. Kid was poisoned. Kid was who would? What, what does that have to do? That you know, mm -hmm. nothing is random in this world. Mm -hmm. And the the plot probably would have worked if not for Jesse spilling that little bit of information. Which, but you don't feel like uh, he screwed up because. I don't, anyway, as a viewer, because I feel like you know he he did an admirable job keeping it together as much as he did. But mm -hmm. this little boy means so much to him; it's mm -hmm. very very hard to. Especially how he flinches when Gus touches yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very Which nice. Which is touch. also a little clue. And the fact that Gus doesn't react, he's. I think Jesse's saying it to see, to get a clue, to get a tell from Gus. I'm going to say I know what happened to the boy was poisoned. I'm going to see how he reacts. Mm -hmm. And Gus doesn't. He's as cold as ice, and that just pisses Jesse off yeah. even more. Yeah. Fifth floor for fifth season, right? That's right. <laughs> well, it's fourth season, but okay. yeah, but we were, <laughs> no, but we, we were we at that point. I don't think we had been picked up yet, right? Uh, maybe that. So okay, let's. let's. <laughs> this was uh, it was hot up there on the real side. rooftop, real yep. rooftop in downtown Albuquerque. I am glad. Uh, right, uh, if you if you were to jump. Over that wall there, you'd you die. Love but you'd, you'd land, you'd land right on old <laughs> Route 66, Central Avenue. Route Central 66, Avenue, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'd be dying on Route 66. Yes. And this, and and the geography here, which I love, is is real. I mean that that rooftop that Walt is on really is in relation there to right. to the other parking. Oh, deck. Yeah, it's terrific because we were you were waving at us and we were sign language. It was great. Yes, yeah. I was directing you via <laughs> via walkie-talkie yeah. and whatnot. When when we look the other way, when we look this direction out to Walt's rooftop, Brian was never never out there for any of that stuff. But when we look from from Brian to Giancarlo, of course, both actors were in their respective positions, two blocks away from each other. Were those lights there on that ledge like that? Or yeah, Christmas they, lights, right? Did you yeah. they, they were, and we didn't take them down because I just kind of liked them. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like them too. It's unusual. It's so random. It's random, and that's why I liked it. Yeah. I, it's random in a way that you know no one would ever probably do that mm -hmm. as set dressing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But now, having said that. There's a recreation. Anytime you're looking at Walt face on over that ledge, it's a fake bit of ledge mm -hmm. that you could move around on roll. That bit there is a yeah. fake bit of ledge you could move around on rollers so that we could obviously not have to hang the camera off in a space there right. to, to get that angle. Oh. And I'm across in that in that building right across. That white there. building, yeah. yeah. The tall the white building, not you know, yeah. But you're not really there. Well, you're not really there there, but that's At the, that time. But that that's is the, the building, building that I was on. Yeah. There was a yeah. lot of speculation also um, that it, that Gus could see come on, come on. reflection off of Walt's glasses. That's right. Yeah. I remember all this. And I'm yeah. like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that, yeah, the white building just below the tall uh, yeah. uh, skyscraper. Yeah. The prominent white one. 
Again, this 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 music here is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, ramping up of this sound. It, it, I love it. Sounds like a jet uh, helicopter starting up, like the turbine yeah. on a helicopter starting up to me. I love Dave Porter's music there. God, yeah, wonderful music. Don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't go. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you said For something interesting here, Brian. You said cut. You saw earlier cut when you were doing audio uh you're doing some looping uh some additional not looping additional uh, adr and you said you said well it's talking too much here and and we thinned it out after that it's i, I was love lo- this right here look that's how, a great look moment. At that moment yeah i just thought uh, defeat the moment plays it for itself yeah and- but i love an actor who's like no nah, give me less to say I love you guys for that. It's all about the moment. <laughs> Total and defeat there. This was oh, done with a handheld Canon 7D on a on a on a tall fiberglass ladder. That last shot. Nice there. work. Wow, nice. Yay! Very Yay. proud of that episode. Very nice. Well everybody. done, everybody. Nice. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.